In previous videos, we talked about the different parts of the respiratory system. In today's video, we are going to focus on the mechanism of breathing. And breathing is the process by which gas exchange takes place in the body. Before we begin with the mechanism of breathing, let's take a look at some of the key players involved in this process. The uh, main parts involved in the mechanism of breathing as you know are the lungs. But apart from the lungs, there are other structures that are involved in this as well. They include the bones that surround the lungs like the sternum and the ribs, the dome shaped muscles situated below the lungs called the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Now what are these intercostal muscles? So the muscles that connect the ribs are known as the intercostal muscles. There are two types internal and external. So all of these are involved in the mechanism of breathing. Before we begin, there are two main steps in the process of breathing. One is inhalation, which is the process by which air enters the body through our nostrils. And the other is exhalation, which is the opposite of inhalation. So the process by which air leaves the body again through our nostrils. So how do these processes occur? Inhalation and exhalation. First, let's start with inhalation. When we're not breathing or when the lung is at rest, the diaphragm is in its original shape, which is a dome shape. But when we have to inhale air, the diaphragm contracts and when it contracts, it is pulled down and becomes slightly flatter. So as this is happening, the ribs and the sternum are raised up. So the ribs and the sternum move up and the diaphragm moves down. How do the ribs and the sternum raise up? That is because of the contraction of the intercostal muscles. We just saw that the ribs and sternum were connected through the intercostal muscles, right? As these muscles contract, the ribs and the sternum are raised up. Now, when this is happening, when the lungs are being pulled down by the diaphragm and the other part that is the ribs and sternum are being pulled up, what is happening is the lung volume increases. So, the lungs are like this right and they have a certain volume and when this is happening when they're being pulled down on one side and being pulled up on the other side the lung volume increases now what is the significance of this increased lung volume you see inside the lungs whatever air is there that exerts a pressure on the lungs and that pressure is known as intrapulmonary pressure and it is always known that air moves from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. Now, with the lung volume increasing, there is a decreased intrapulmonary pressure. Now, how does this happen? With the lung volume increasing, the molecules of air inside the lungs, they just have more space to move around. So, they don't bump into each other more frequently, which decreases the intrapulmonary pressure. Now, what is the significance of this decreased intrapulmonary pressure? Well, that has to do with the difference between the pressure inside the lungs and outside the lungs. You see, there is something known as the atmospheric pressure or ATM, which is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere, the gases in the atmosphere, whatever pressure they exert, that is known as atmospheric pressure. Now, as the lung volume increases and as the intrapulmonary pressure decreases, the intrapulmonary pressure becomes less than the atmospheric pressure. Now, I just said that air moves from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure, right? This difference in pressure, this pressure gradient basically causes air to enter the lungs. The atmospheric pressure at a normal sea level is around 760 millimeters of mercury. And let's say because of this increase in lung volume, this intrapulmonary pressure decreases to about 754 mmHg. Now, air has a gradient, pressure gradient through which it can move. So that's what air does. It enters from a region of higher pressure, which is the atmosphere, to a region of lower pressure, which is inside the lungs. And this is the process of inhalation. Now, what happens during exhalation is the exact opposite of this. So during exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and as it relaxes, it moves up. So it is now flat like this, but when it relaxes, it moves up and it becomes even more dome shaped. And at the same time, the intracostal muscles relax, which cause the ribs and the sternum to be pulled down. 
so the ribs and the sternum they were originally raised up right now they are lowered they are pulled down and as this is happening as the diaphragm is relaxing and as the ribs and the sternum are being lowered the lung volume decreases and as the lung volume decreases the air inside the lungs they have less space to move around which means they more frequently bump into each other and this bumping of air atoms inside the lungs causes an increased intrapulmonary pressure so as the lung volume decreases the intrapulmonary pressure increases now the pressure inside the lungs is greater than the atmospheric pressure say it was around 754 during inhalation but now it becomes 764 but the atmospheric pressure is still 760 mmh right it doesn't change but now this has increased the pressure inside the lungs has increased so air inside the lungs is at a higher pressure than the air outside the lungs so that makes air move from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure causing air to be pushed out or exhaled out of the lungs this gif here this shows the mechanism of breathing see how the diaphragm contracts and relaxes and how the lung volume increases and decreases during inhalation and exhalation the increase in lung volume causes air to enter the lungs while the decrease in lung volume causes air to leave the lungs this is the process of inhalation and exhalation and the mechanism of breathing we just saw how the breathing process occurred right now we'll talk about how the exact process of gas exchange takes place inside the lungs now the mechanism of gas exchange which is the oxygen in the lungs entering the blood and the carbon dioxide in the blood entering the lungs that occurs at sites known as alveoli alveoli are the functional units of lungs and they can be thought of like air sacs or balloons so when air enters the lungs during the process of inhalation the air sacs the alveoli they bulge up they blow up like how we would blow up a balloon and the balloon would become bigger right like that with air entering the lungs during inhalation the air sacs they blow up now the air sacs or the alveoli are conveniently connected through a lot of blood vessels they have a lot of tiny capillaries that serve each and every alveolus there is that makes up the lungs and these blood vessels are the sites of gas exchange so oxygen from the lungs enters the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood enters the lungs but what makes this possible how does oxygen know to enter the blood from the lungs and how does carbon dioxide know to enter the lungs from the blood well that has to do with the concentration of these gases in the lungs and in the blood you see in the alveoli basically within the lungs the concentration of oxygen is higher basically the air we breathe in has more oxygen and less carbon dioxide so the concentration of oxygen within the lungs as we inhale is high but in the blood capillaries that reach the lungs the concentration of oxygen is less and the concentration of carbon dioxide is more why is this whatever carbon dioxide is produced as a result of cellular respiration is picked up by the blood right and the blood that reaches the lungs that reaches the alveoli is rich in carbon dioxide all the oxygen has been used up to perform cellular respiration so the blood that reaches the lungs has very little oxygen but a lot of carbon dioxide so always gas moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration you can also think of it has a region of higher partial pressure that is between the two gases oxygen and carbon dioxide whatever pressure that is exerted by oxygen is known as its partial pressure and whatever pressure exerted by carbon dioxide that is known as partial pressure of carbon dioxide so in the lungs the partial pressure of oxygen is high and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is low but in the blood capillaries that reach the lungs the partial pressure of oxygen is low but the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high so air always moves from a region of higher partial pressure to a region of lower partial pressure because of this difference oxygen moves from a region of higher partial pressure which is the alveoli into a region of lower partial pressure which is the blood 
So the movement of gas is in this direction from the alveoli into the blood. At the same time, carbon dioxide also moves along its partial pressure gradient. It moves from a region of higher partial pressure which is the blood to a region of lower partial pressure which is the lungs inside the alveoli. So carbon dioxide moves from the blood into the alveoli. So whatever oxygen that has entered the blood that is picked up by hemoglobin and taken to all cells, whatever carbon dioxide enters the alveoli that is exhaled out. Now this is the process of gas exchange that occurs in the alveoli. It occurs because of the difference in concentration or the difference in partial pressures between oxygen and carbon dioxide.